welcome back to Am Writing Fantasy and the 15 minute fantasy writer series where you can find tips to learn to write fantasy better on your lunch break and still find some time to write. So we are on to number two where we're going to talk about how to vet a story idea. Remember, I'm author Autumn Bird, the creator of Am Writing Fantasy and the 15 minute fantasy writer. So let's go ahead and jump in to see if your newest story idea is really worth spending months writing time. Welcome back to the 15 minute fantasy writer series. I'm author and writing coach Autumn Berth, the creator of the Am Writing Fantasy blog and this series of quick writing tips. On this video, we're going to look at developing story ideas. Wouldn't it be nice to know if the idea you've come up with is going to make an interesting plot for a novel or if it'll even make any sense? All before you spend months writing to realize that the story is going nowhere, or you are facing a huge plot hole that might require writing, you know, rewriting half the manuscript to fix it, or if you're a plotter before you spend days or weeks outlining chapters and scenes. How about if you could do a quick little te litmus test to see if this idea is worth pursuing, whether you are a plotter, a pantser, or a hybrid like me. Oh, and better yet, once you run through this quick exercise, you also write your story faster. Now is that worth a 15 minute video? Great, let's jump in. What I'm going to show you today is a short exercise you can do to vet the story idea before you spend weeks or months working on it, only to realize it is full of holes and inconsistencies or just doesn't make any sense. This will save you time, not only in working on something that isn't a good story, but it'll help you write faster because you'll have created a framework to guide where the story is heading. In other words, you'll develop the story plot to the point that you'll fill in the plot holes, know the beginning and ending align, and the whole thing gets you excited enough to write it and readers excited enough to read it. So don't worry, it'll be fast and loose framework. So even if you're a pantser, you'll still be able to follow the character's lead, but you'll also be able to judge if they are leading you astray. Now that should be kind of exciting. Now, first thing you should know is all stories really follow a basic framework of seven stages. And those are intro, inciting incident, reaction phase, new info, planning phase, climax, and wrap up. Now we're going to look at each of those really quickly and the questions you should ask yourself to see if your idea can be developed into a full novel or you should keep working on it a little bit longer. So of course the first one up is the intro. Now this part of the novel is a chance to introduce readers to the main character and his or her reality before you jump into the full plot of the novel. Think of those many stories from Aragon to Game of Thrones. The first scene are things are happening, but they are usually minor incidents that involve the problems of a normal day in the character's world. This allows us to experience what that world is like before the chaos of the book really starts getting good. So when you're working on your intro, what you need to do is ask a few questions. So who is the main character? What is the normal world for him or her? And what elements are accepted or shunned? So is magic acceptable? Are women allowed to be warriors? You should outline what is normal in this world before you start tossing up things and making strange comparisons. And also think, what is the setting of the story? And that includes the time period, you know, is it the future, the past? Are people, is there electricity? Or are people running around in, you know, loincloths? Also, you know, that could also be rural, fantasy, city, space. You need to kind of set that up so you know how you're going to be writing the story. And like I said, this is really the chance to introduce the reader to the main character and his or her reality before you jump into that full plot of the novel. This is how you want to start things happening. This is The book really launches after this point, and that's where we're going now. That's the inciting incident. So this is what like I mentioned. This is when the plot really launches. Something big happens. Something that really thrusts the main character from a normal day that we've just introduced the reader to, to a new reality that usually is not expected. You need this to happen early in the novel, but after the intro, so the reader at least knows a few details about the world and the main character. You don't want them totally lost before they even know what's going on. 
Now, things to ask yourself on the inciting incident is what happens to force the main character to leave home? You know, leaving home can off on an adventure, or it can be to another section of the city. It can also be going clear across the country. The point is, they're not staying the same place that they were on page one of the novel. And, you know, unless they're also spiritually teleporting to a new realm while their body stays put. But in general, when you get to an inciting incident, the character is going to be thrust from their normal life, their comfortable home, and off into the wilderness. And you need to decide, is this going to be a willing, desired, or a tragic event? Some characters, you know, they want to leave home so badly. Okay, maybe I sound a little envious there because I'm a wanderer at heart. But, you know, other ones are perfectly content. They think they have their whole world and life mapped out. And they're not going to want to go. So ask yourself, how does this inciting incident, what happens to boot them out the door? And if it's a tragic, you know, was the main villain of your novel targeting the main character in the family already? Are they looking for something? Or is it accidental? They were in the way of something, you know, they just had to go through that village and decided to destroy it on the way. You should know if this was just random act of violence or if this was planned because this character's an heir to some magical item and that is what the main villain is really looking for. You also need to know who goes with your main character. Are there any friends? Are they out and alone? Is there someone else they're going to pick up right on the outskirts of the village? You need to kind of know who's tagging along. And you should ask yourself what happens to those left behind. Is everyone dead? Our normal life is continuing and they're like, oh, what happened to her? You know, we just need to have that idea in the back of your mind because it kind of sets what's going to happen next. And that is the reaction phase. This is where everything the character has known before in her world has turned upside down. It could have been slightly willingly as Bilbo setting off with the doors, or it could have been pure heck with the village on fire as a maverick wizard searches for an ancient talisman. But life is forever altered. Your main character is reeling and most likely not able to survive without some help because they just don't have the skills to be out in the world, no matter how much they thought they knew on page one. You could have that character who's more than willing to set off. It's just waiting for the excuse, but hasn't kind of managed to do whatever it was that's going to be the trigger. They think they know what's going to be out there waiting for them. Well, if you've ever left home, you realize, no, no, they don't. There's a whole world of hurt you're going to have to learn, too. So this is the reaction phase where even if you're willing, you're not ready for what's out there, and if you weren't willing, you sure as heck are barely going to be lucky to survive. So to cover the reaction phase, you need to ask yourself a few questions. And one of the first is, what skills does a character and any friends that have come along have to survive where they find themselves? Can they find food? Do they know how to get water? Do they know how to hunt? What do they need? Do they have any magic? You need to know if they can even take care of themselves. And also, what threats do they face? Most likely, they just went through this inciting incident, so there could be a chance of pursuit. And if so, who's pursuing them? Is it the main villain? A secondary? Henchmen? Just criminals? Who's after them? Maybe mom and dad just want them to come home. And, you know, is it a harsh and dangerous environment? Are there dragons? Are there things out there? Robbers on the road? What challenges are they facing? And look at those skills again. How are they doing and surviving? Because guess what? In the reaction phase, they're going to need help. So who and will they find to help them survive this stage? Who can they run into? Who might end up being helpful? Or just another tragic problem that might end up being the death of someone or a near escape. So outline those things that will happen during this phase. Because after that, we have to move into new info. You know, the characters cannot be stumbling about, nearly dying without someone helping forever. At some point, a revelation kicks in. Maybe they discover why the village was destroyed, or why the king is really a tyrant, or where the hidden talisman really is. Sometimes this moment is also referred to the dark night of the soul because the main character only comes to it by making a super serious mistake that results in the death of a friend. 
So whatever it is that will spur the character from reacting to the inciting incident and being lost like a newbie in the forest, and they're going to start taking control of the journey to learn the necessary skills and gain the needed objects. That's what happens in this new info. And like I said, it can be a tragic dark night of the soul, or it could be a kind of epiphany of, oh gosh, you know what? I, a humbling experience. You're right. I should have been listening to you. I am going to go get the training I need. Or just finally they find that one clue in the book that will send them in the right direction. So in this new info phase, you should ask yourself a few questions. Because remember, the character has a direction and purpose. They're going to get it from this. So what does the character realize to change the course of the journey? Figure out what that is so you know they're going to get that kind of oomph, start moving forward on their own instead of just stumbling about like a ping pong ball. And how is it going to help them defeat the main villain? Remember, this all is going to be building to something, so we got to start working that in. And do they leave behind or lose any friends? This sort of touches on that dark night of the soul, but sometimes it can just be outgrowing. Maybe they have a friend who doesn't like magic or doesn't think they should go learn to fight. You know, sibling, someone who's a little overprotective, and they're going to have to say no. You're not coming with me. I'm going to go do this. It's a moment of sort of growing up and taking control and taking charge. And what they do is they charge right out into the planning phase. The character has a direction and a purpose now. Usually it's a plan to defeat the villain, but at this stage it's also usually combined with a bigger purpose. Either a more mature, altruistic role for the character to take on, or a desire to help others suffering and not just right the wrong done to the main character with the inciting incident or the turmoil during the planning, the reaction phase. So during the stage two, the main villain becomes aware of the main character and actively tries to stop her. You know, the pace is starting to pick up. The main character has gained skill and is gaining more rapidly while the villain is sensing this person is a problem and I've got to take care of him. This is an exciting phase to read and it's an exciting phase to write. And so to do that, to delve into this, you have to ask yourself a few questions. Like, what is the character's plan to defeat the villain or the overall jingle? You know, usually you want to get rid of the tyrant king, but not just because he's a tyrant king and, like, you know, hurt your mom, but because he's destroying everything you love and you've got to stop that. And also, what skills or other resources has the main character gained or is gaining? And what skills and resources do friends or companions have? Figure out what they've learned and how far they've come. Also, when does the villain become aware of the main character as a problem, and how? And what does the villain tr do to try to stop the main character? Those are hurdles, and they're going to start getting more and more serious as the planning phase goes on, and you start getting close to that big, important moment of the climax. You know, this is when it all comes together. The main character must confront the villain because none of the problems will be solved until the big, big problem is taken care of. Because yeah, the villain is the source of all the problems. Really, this is what the entire book is leading up to. Here you must decide who is going to win, who is going to die, and how close of a victory or defeat this series of scenes will be. And don't forget when I say battle, this can mean vast armies, single combat. Um, to just a couple of people infiltrating a palace. It could be a chess game over tea, but <laughs> that doesn't sound like a huge climax, but I'm sure you could make it happen. There are no wrong answers here. It just has to make sense based on what the character learned in the new info stage and what she has seen in the reaction phase or gained the experience of and skills in the planning phase. In the climax, what you want to start asking yourself to figure out what happens here are questions like, will the main character win or lose? Will the villain win or lose? Now again, the main character and the villain can both win. Maybe the main the villain really wanted a talisman and gets it. But at the same time, the main character wins and overthrows the tyrant king. You know, there's a lot of outcomes. It's not plus and minus or black and white. There's a lot of gray in here. You also need to decide who is going to die. Now, true, when you're writing, sometimes things surprise you. Some characters drop off that you didn't expect. But it helps to have a little bit of an outline knowing 
you know, is the main character going to die, the best friend? You kind of want to work that out. Also, what lessons are learned during the reaction phase and planning phase help now? Start tying this whole plot together. If you can do that, it's going to be a much more solid story. Also, look at how did the information in the new info play phase play a role? What did they learn that sent them in the right direction so that they will win or maybe led astray and will lose during the climax? And lastly, what is the setup and type of confrontation that will occur? You know, are you planning this vast battle? Are you pl planning that assassination, a poisoning? Figure out what kind of climax you're looking at. That'll help you know how you're going to build up to it when you're writing. Now we're to the final, final phase. That's the wrap up. So just like the intro showed a normal day for the character, the wrap-up eases the reader into the new normal. Because let's face it, simply getting rid of the villain will not instantly solve all the problems. Evil doesn't exist without numerous individuals allowing it to. Or if the main character is defeated and lives, there are a lot of new crazy scenarios to develop. Is she in prison, injured, or on the run? In other words, are all the plot threads wrapped up and promises kept? Or is there going to be a subsequent book? Set the stage for the next book or tie up any of those lingering questions and allow the reader to project what the future will be like for the main character, who they've rooted for since the page one. So finishing up the wrap up, the questions you need to ask is, what is the new normal? You know, what is the result? Is it the result the character hoped for? And are all the problems solved? If not, you know, that's a good way to tie into the next book, but you need to kind of figure that out here. Will there be subsequent books? And so, if so, what questions are you going to leave unanswered to finish up in the next book or be developing into a new plot? And if not, how will you wrap up all the plot lines and project for the future for the character? Because that's what the reader wants to know on that last book or a standalone book. They want to have that future glimpse of everything being fine or everything being horrible. They want to see what's coming up ahead. All right, that was a little bit over. Let's wrap up. Thank you so much for coming. And don't forget to check out the 15 Minute Fantasy series. Come on over to the website for more writing tips at mwritingfantasy.com.